Another cool one uh, that we're going to move on to here is uh, a bristle disc. It's a 3M product. And uh, basically what these are, is it's little plastic bristles. Um, you know, it's the same idea that you think of with a wire, with like a cone-shaped wire wheel, but it's plastic. This is a little more, um, it's a little easier on the metal. Uh, it doesn't gouge, it doesn't scrape as much as a, as a wire wheel might do. It's a little safer because you're not throwing metal shards at yourself all the time. Um, and these come in different grits. So the one I, let me just make sure I got the right one here. We got a 50, 20, and this, uh, here's an 80 to keep us fairly honest here. So all these do, um, I'll show you on this one here. Hopefully you can see. There's little plastic threads inside. So these thread right onto these four and a half inch angle grinders. Uh, they thread right directly on. Now one key I've seen with some people that um, have had some negative reviews on the site is that they complain that the, the threads strip out easily. Well, you don't need to honk down on these threads. You know, you make them tight, but you don't need to go crazy, um, crazy on these because you can strip them out because they are plastic. But if you're if you're stripping these out, you're probably going way too tight. Like I, uh, like I just did there, I just did a little snug, a little past uh, you know, uh, what I would call snug would be would be good for this. So, you know what? We uh, forgot a square here. So I'll do up above this one here and uh, show you how this one works. So by nature, with the with the plastic bristles on these, they don't uh, they don't strip quite as quickly, um, but they are good for big areas. You can really work these across an area, and they don't really wear in a cone shape like the other one does. You can keep these pretty flat because the area that you're working is over here. So unlike some of those other ones where you're working the edge and it wears quickly into a cone shape, and then you got to change it out. These things, if you use them correctly, I got a worn one here. You can wear these down all the way. So we'll show you a new one versus versus the old one. So you get a lot of a lot of material here that you can that you can wear down to. So they are a little a little more expensive than the other options, but they do last pretty long. I mean, you you got you got a probably a good inch and a half or so or more there that, that you have to work till you're getting down to what's you know I use these till there's almost nothing left down there. So these are good, uh, good option. Again, you can throw these in and, uh, as another option to use. Uh, one key with these is these little bristles can fly off. So when you're working around edges, be very careful, very careful, because these little uh, these little bristles they can fly off and they hurt. So make sure you're wearing a, a jacket or long sleeves when you're doing any of these jobs, because uh, that's very important as well. So next one I have is uh, is the little what a lot of people will call cookies. It's a kind of name, of, but um, these discs right here, is, again, it's kind of a 3M design. They have a little screw-in area on the back. And then again, you need the, uh, the backing plate. So this is a larger one I have here just with a, with a sanding disc on it. But we're just going to show you what they look like. So you just thread these in to the backing part. Um, this is obviously a smaller disc, so you can get the 2-inch uh, backing pad. But that's all it is. You just thread it in, and you're done. Um, these are same idea as the other items we were showing you, but what's good to have these on hand is that you, these you can get into little crevices, little areas, and they are a little more flexible. The backing pad's more flexible. So when you're sanding, if you need to uh, try and show you, so these bend a bit. So if you're sanding, you need to get into a crevice or into an area that you can't get to with some of these ones that aren't as flexible because the backing pad for these that we showed you is not flexible. So it's good to have a box of these on hand. You can work any of those areas. So what I like to do is work the big panels, stay away from the edges, and then you come back with something like this, strip all your edges around window frames, things like that with these, and then you, you know, you can, you'll be good to go all around. So that's all the mechanical uh, removal. So all the things you're going to use a machine or your own, 
uh, brute force to remove. Next thing we're going to move on to, I can take this off for this, um, is chemical remover. So there's always a lot of questions about um, chemical paint stripper. Does it work? Is it good? Is it safe for the panel? Um, these, these, this is an option that we have. We have a gel. Um, since we're doing a hood, we have a, we have a paint, normal paint stripper and a gel. The gel is a little thicker. It's going to stick to a panel a little better, especially if you're doing a hood like this where it's going to want to run off. So I decided to pick the gel to show you guys today. It comes in uh, an aerosol, the gallon, and then the quart uh, container here. And I really prefer to use the, uh, the gallon or the quart with these acid brushes that we sell. So little metal brushes, and uh, these things are designed to work with these chemicals. So you dump a little bit of this on the panel, and you brush it on. So I'm going to put some rubber gloves on before we show you that, because um, this stuff is... Uh, it's pretty nasty stuff. So you get this on your hands, it's going to burn. If anybody that's used this before and you, you get a little bit on the edge of your hand and you go to brush the hair out of your eyes, your forehead's going to start burning. So uh, try to avoid doing that. Keep, keep rubber gloves on at all, all times so you're uh, not getting burning all over you. So I dumped a little bit of this on, a little bit of this on before we started the show. And uh, this is what it basically looks like. So I dumped it on in puddles and I work it around with the brush like this. So this has already been working basically for about five minutes before we started. I dumped some of this on just to get it going. Um, it can take anywhere from five to ten minutes to an hour to, to, do, uh, to start working. Depends on the type of paint and uh, how many layers there is, everything like that. The key with this to get this to work really fast is to uh, use that DA sander and break the surface with the DA. And that's what I did with this. I broke the surface so I started scratching up the white that was underneath the black here, and then I put some of this on. That helps it really work into all the layers of the paint, especially if you're stripping something that has a clear coat on it. Uh, a good clear coat is going to have a real good bond on it, and you want to use that to kind of break through the clear into the paint, and then it'll start working its way down. So this has been working, and uh, now I'm just going to use a scraper here, an old one we have laying around, and uh, just show you kind of how you do it. So. That's just taking all those layers off like this. And hear how quiet it is? That's the great thing about this stuff. Just you can hear your music and you can just work like this. So is it messy? Yes, but so is the other, the other methods because you're, you're just spreading, um, you're spreading dust all over the place. So I'll just kind of push this up higher on the hood so you can see and then we'll grab a... So. We're down pretty far. We'd probably have to go a little bit, uh, another, probably another session of this. We can get down through these last couple of coats. But that got off the white, the black that was on the top, and we're getting down into those original finishes, which may be a little bit more difficult to get off. But that required little to no effort. So you can pour it on the whole entire hood, brush it in, walk away, do whatever you need to do, come back, spread it around, and work it back and forth. Um, I really like to work this. In, um, in conjunction with the mechanical methods that we showed. So I'll use this to get a good chunk of it off in one shot where you can just scrape it off, brush it on the, in the trash can, and then I'll come back and work any areas I need to with the, uh, with the mechanical methods. But this works really well to dump over a whole entire panel. Um, if you are using this, you should still use some sort of face mask if you're doing a giant panel, especially if you're in a garage that's not ventilated well. You should try and ventilate it, but either way, you should try and use a face mask if you're doing a large a large area because this stuff does get pretty, uh, pretty smelly when you're doing it. So those are the, uh, the big um, ways you can do it at home with little investment. So th these are all things that are, aren't a big investment. You don't need giant tools. You can get an angle grinder, or a DA sander. That's common things that a lot of you guys probably have laying around. Um, if you want to, if you want to do, if you're doing a lot of restorations, where you're really getting in depth with doing um, how you're stripping the paint and everything off of a vehicle, you may want to think about investing into media blasting. So I have one of our pressure blasters here. So media blasting, basically you're pressurizing the media that's uh, sometimes will be called sand blasting, which isn't really a correct term, but the media that's inside of it, you don't want to be using play sand, um, the specific blasting media inside of it, uh, it's pressurized. You open the nozzle, it's going to shoot out the media at a really high velocity, which is when it hits the panel, it's going to strip it off. 
So if you're planning on doing a, a whole entire vehicle, you could see yourself doing a lot of vehicle, you know, more than just one over time, this might be a good investment for you. It's also good for doing chassis, getting in tight areas, things like that. Um, it's, it's a really good one to use. Now, media blasters can cause just as much damage on when you're stripping paint as that flap disc that I showed you. Why? Because people will tend to sit in one spot on a panel. That's really bad. It heats up the panel, and as we talked about, it warps the panel. That's horrible. So a lot of times you'll hear guys um, on forums and things like that saying, never media blast a car, never ever media blast a car. If done correctly, media blasting is a great, um, a great way to quickly remove paint. We also have soda blasting available. You can a conversion kit or separate soda blasters for these. You can strip off paint, so you can use it safely on fiberglass, things like that. You can use where the, uh, the, the base material is a, little more, um, so, is a little softer than, say, a steel hood or things like that. So that's a great one to use. Now, if you don't want to do the investment of a pressure blaster, a stand-up media blaster, we started offering these recently. It's just what we call our small blast kit. We basically took media blasting to the simplest method and uh, you know, crunched it together for small jobs. You don't need to, if you need shop space where you can't see yourself doing a lot of big jobs, this is good to have. These are great when you're stripping paint because no matter any of these discs that I'm showing you, any of these methods, they, they're really, it's tough to get in those hard to reach areas where you can't get the grinding, uh, grinding or stripping disc in. This is gonna get into all these crevices. So basically all it is, so you have your pickup tube here holds the media, you put it in one of, our, uh, one of our little small blast kits, or you can purchase the big bags after you purchase the kit and shove it in a 50 pound bag if you want, but you can use these little small ones. Hook your air pressure up, squeeze the trigger, you're, you're going. That's pretty much all it is to it versus the other one where it's a little more setup time. But where you want to use a media blaster is areas like in here if we can see. If I tried using the 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 uh, stripping disc in here, we're going we're gonna to hit this surface. So you're going to be standing there, or you're going to be using the edge, edge of the disc trying to get up in these crevices here. And really, you're going to gouge the metal before you get all that paint off. So save these areas for the small blast kit, get your whole hood stripped, and then come back and work all these small areas that may have surface rust, may have paint left over. Uh, that's why those kits are really good to have around. So that way, you, you don't need a ton of material. One of those small uh, containers will cover you, know, you can do a, 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 lot of, a lot of blasting with that just to get those small little areas. So those are some of my favorite methods for stripping paint. Um, the last, uh, last thing that I'm going to cover before we start doing any questions that you guys might have is what do I do with the panel after I've stripped the paint? So you've stripped all your paint, you're down to bare metal. Not everybody is a production shop where they can go and immediately they, they can primer the panel and start doing body work. Your, your car may sit around, you may even have to push it outside you know, to do some other things. What you need to use, uh, we have a couple products. My favorite that I pulled out here is uh, our Eastwood Fast Etch. So this is one of the most diverse chemicals for, uh, for this type of work to have laying around. This is good for getting uh, rust that's in pits that you can't get to with the, uh, with the stripping and cleaning discs that we talked about. Um, so you can put it in there, you can spray it in, let it sit, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to actually eat away. Um, it's going to actually dissolve, and it leaves, it leaves the phosphoric coating on it after it's done. So what's great about that phosphoric coating is it actually it leaves a coating on top of the panel, the bare metal, that isn't going to rust. So this is a nice barrier if you're pushing outside, if your garage isn't heat, heat controlled, even the changes in temperatures are going to ca cause condensation, it's going to make the panel rust. So. I, show, I have an area right here that I just wanted to show you guys that is a perfect example. So this hood was tested a lot. I sprayed it black just to get it all one color for you guys. I left an area that was, on, that was somebody had stripped, and, they, and this was just from sitting around. It got that surface rust in it. So what you can do, uh, if I have a rag here, we'll see if it'll uh, quickly, and then we'll, uh, we'll be good. So. so you can spray it on this area just like this. And we got an empty bottle. All right. Told you I use that stuff a lot. So you can put that on there and start rubbing it. And you can see it's slowly taking away the rust, but just a little bit that I sprayed. So what I do is I'll, uh, if you have any surface rust like this that you did forget to spray the panel, wipe it down, clean it with the fast etch. That'll take the rust off and then spray a little bit more of the fast etch and just let it sit on it. That'll leave that phosphoric coating 
which you can leave the panels in bare metal, and then when you're ready to start doing body work or you want to start um, you know, working dents and things like that, you can just strip it off. You can use a chemical like our pre, spray on it, wipe it down with pre, that'll get everything clean, and then you're good to go to do your body work. But you can leave that on there, and that'll, that'll be a good barrier for an extended period of time unless the surface is broke where the rust may happen. So uh, that's, that's the basics that I have here. If you have any questions or uh, future topics that you'd like myself, Kevin, to cover, feel free to shoot us an email, leave us a message, um, leave us any comments on our YouTube or our Facebook. So thanks again for joining us, and we'll catch you next time.